In this video, we're going to talk about how to simplify an expression like this, where you have a radical and you have a radicand that in turn contains a radical that is part of a binomial expression. So you might say, well, where would I ever run into this situation? Well, this is a classic example. If you are asked to solve this equation, the first thing you might try to do is to square both sides. So here, because we're dealing with a square root, if you square both sides, you simply remove the radical sign. But on the right side, if we were to go ahead and square this, we would have to FOIL this because this is a binomial. So when you FOIL this and you multiply the square root of x minus 1 times the square root of x minus 1, the radical goes away. And then we have 2 times the square root of x minus 1 plus 1. If we further simplify, the minus 1 and plus 1 cancel. If I bring this x to the opposite side of the equation, we're going to have x minus 5 equals 2 times radical x minus 1. Okay, so in this situation, we would again square both sides. On the left side, we would simply FOIL. And on the right side, we would multiply those factors. And we would end up with something like this. Distributing the 4. and then simplifying. Okay, this expression is not factorable, so we would have to then go ahead and use our quadratic equation. And that would give us negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, 14 squared is 196, minus 4 times 1 times 29, all over 2a. So I went ahead and simplified that, and we ended up with 7 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. Now, here's the problem, folks. Throughout this exercise, we have squared both sides numerous times. And when we do that, you have to check your solutions. So that means we're going to have to check these two solutions in the original equation. And when you do that, if we reinsert x into this expression, The first thing that's going to happen, let's say we're dealing with the positive version, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to take this and substitute it in for x. And if we do that, we get this expression. So this is why you have to become facile with dealing with something like this because you may get presented with an equation that results in a solution that when you plug it in, you have a radical beneath a radical. So let's now talk about how we might simplify this expression. Now folks, recall when we simplify radicals, okay, let's say we had the square root of 16, we look for perfect squares because when we have perfect squares under a radical, we can convert it to this form, and because the radical root matches the exponent, we can simply remove the radical and the exponent to get 4. We're going to use that same approach here. We're going to ask ourselves, does this expression under the radical represent something squared? Just like 
This expression, the 16, represented the 4 squared, which allowed us to remove the radical to reveal the 4. We're going to see, does this expression equal something that's squared, which would then allow us to reveal whatever that is. So the first thing we would do here is go ahead and distribute and simplify. So that would yield square root of 14 plus 4 square root of 5 minus 5, which would then give us the square root of 9 plus 4 square root of 5. Now, because there's a plus sign here, we want to determine, does 9 plus, the f plus 4 square root of 5 represent this scenario? Because if it does, then we can remove the radical to reveal a plus b as the simplification of the original expression. As you know, a plus b squared, if we were to FOIL it, would be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. We are going to rearrange this a little bit. And we're going to ask ourselves, does this expression, a squared plus b squared on one side, and then the 2ab on the other side, does it pattern match with the simplification of what was under our original radical, which was 9 plus 4 square root of 5. Specifically, we're going to ask ourselves, does this a squared plus b squared equal 9, and does the 2ab correspond to the 4 times the square root of 5? So we're going to let b equal the square root of 5, and we're going to let 2a equal 4, which means a would equal 2. Now we're going to take a squared plus b squared, and we're going to see if that matches with the 9. So we're going to have 2 squared plus the square root of 5 squared, which is going to equal 4 plus 5 equals 9. Therefore, we do have a situation where we have a plus b squared. So this green expression here is really equal to the square root of a plus b squared. As a result, we could simply remove this radical sign and the exponent to reveal that expression. Let's look at this second example. Again, we have a radical with a radicand that contains a binomial with a radical. And we're going to ask ourselves, does this fit the pattern of a plus b squared? Because if so, we could simply remove the radical sign, remove the exponent, and reveal a plus b. Let's let a squared plus b squared pattern match with 11. And let's let this term pattern match with 2ab. We're going to let b equal square root of 2, and we're going to let 2a equal 6, which gives us a equals 3. So the question is, if we take a squared plus b squared, and we use a3 and b equal to 2, we're going to have 9 plus 2 equals 11. So indeed, we do have the following. A plus B squared is going to be 3 plus the square root of 2 squared. 
there's our A, there's our B. When we have this situation, we simply remove the radical and we remove the exponent. So our final answer is 3 plus square root of 2. Sometimes, as is the case with this particular problem, it's not as straightforward. So let's go ahead and ask ourselves, does this represent a plus b squared? So as usual, we are going to see if this equals 2ab and if this corresponds to the pattern of a squared plus b squared. We're going to let b equal square root of 3 and 2a equal 12, which means a equals 6. Now, if we do a squared, we get 36. b squared, we get 3. We get 39. Clearly, 39 is not equal to 21. So we have to try a different technique. What we're going to do is we're going to change what we let a and b equal to. So again, we're going to have this expression, or this term, excuse me, try to pattern match with b. But this time, we're going to rewrite 12 square root of 3 as 6 times 2 square root of 3. And we're going to let this equal b, and we're going to let this equal a. Now, we, ha we will have, I'm sorry, that'll equal 2a. Now we have a equals 3, b equals 2 square root of 3. And when we square these, we're going to have 9 plus 4 times 3 equals 9 plus 12, which equals 21. Therefore, here is our a and b. Therefore, we have the square root of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3 squared with a final answer of 3 times 2 square root of 3. And if you want to prove that to yourself, something we haven't done yet in this video, let's take this final expression that we got and let's FOIL it and see if we get what's underneath the original radical. So if we do believe that this represents then when we square this we should get what's under the radical. So if we FOIL this we get 9 plus 4 times 3 I'm sorry. We're going to get 9 plus 6 root 3 plus 6 root 3 plus 4 times 3. 9 plus 12 square root of 3 plus 12. And that's going to give us 12 square root of 3 plus 21. So indeed, when we square this, we get this, which means if you take the square root of that squared, your final answer is simply going to be 3 plus 2 square root of 3. Let's now look at this last example to see if this fits a minus b squared. So in this case, we're going to pattern match a squared plus b squared to the 109. And we're going to pattern match. We're going to leave the minus sign there. And we're going to pattern match 2ab with 48 square root of 5. So if we let b equal square root of 5, 2a equal 24, and then we ask ourselves, does 24 squared plus the square root of 5 squared equal 
109, the answer is that it does not. So just like in the previous example, we're going to rewrite things. So instead of having 45 square root of 5, we're going to break this up into letting 2ab equal 48 square root of 5, a times b equal 24, and we're going to let 24 be broken down into 8 times 3 root 5. We're going to let this equal to b and this equal to a. And when we do that, we find that 8 squared plus 3 root 5 squared would give us 64 plus 9 times 5, which does equal 109. So folks, here are the correct A and B values. So this becomes 8 minus 3 times the square root of 5 squared. Therefore, we are allowed to remove the radical, and this is our final answer. So this expression can be simplified to 8 minus 3 square root of 5.